All right, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, finish this from last week. It's something I want to, was looking forward to all week. Hey, let me clarify real quick. Uh, I know a couple of people who need, and this isn't a correction of Pastor Jackson, it's a clarification. Um, if you use your phone for the Bible or an iPad or things like that, people have told me before, eyesight and I need the light and whatnot, that's, you're not a punk, okay? It's just <laughs> Uh, your phone's okay. Your tablet's okay. Uh, it's, um, but I know how phones can be. It's a deep, it's a rabbit hole that you can get lost in and start scrolling this and looking here and doing that. I've done that. I've done it. And, um, that's why I became the preacher. So I wouldn't do it anymore. So I just, uh, <laughs> but if you have to use your phone to see scripture, to follow along Bible, things like that, not a problem, not a problem. Um, but I do encourage your Bible though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's uh, some things we're trying to get for the PA room. I know we're a killer printer, and um, Brother Alex told me, he said, you know, we've got a really good system here. He's like, but if we could get this lens for the camera, that would be like the cherry on top. So, and it's a, it's a really nice lens. It's a really good lens, but I don't know. I don't want, I don't know if I want people to see that much ugly up here. So I just, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, that, that lens there, but uh, it's been a blessing. That's something that is developing um, multimedia ministry, some things that I have some uh, experience with at college and, and whatnot. But um, uh, all of that, those books, there's every, I mean, there's all kinds of things from all kinds of folks and preachers back there. Pick something up uh, and, and uh, uh, let it be a blessing to you. All right. I, I need to get into this very quickly and have our special. Where's Miss Sarah? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to sing, but we're just going to use this mic. All right? You thought you were free and clear, didn't you? We're singing, sister. All right, let's look at John chapter 14, verse number 15. The Bible says, if ye love me, Jesus says, if ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, uh, that, he may be, uh, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Uh, verse 26, the Bible says, But the Comforter, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help our time this morning, help it to be profitable, if we'll listen. Uh, Lord, we need you. We ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. In letters of crimson, God wrote his love on a hillside.
I, um, I am excited, and I, I have to learn uh, in my uh, excitement, my zeal. Uh, you know, you, you find something, and you kind of... Uh, I Jackson's, we have a little bit of a um, personality issues <laughs> where we... Um, I don't call it necessarily an addictive personality, but you, you kind of find something good, and you latch on to it. And um, uh, the Holy Spirit is the thing that is good that will, it doesn't ever wear out. Um, and if you if you keep it in the Bible parameters, it's, it doesn't it doesn't wear out. It doesn't get old. It doesn't get boring. Um, you know, just as Jesus said uh, in Revelation to the seven churches, you've you know I've got something against you. You know, you've left you've left your first love. I've, you know, I've have somewhat against you. And I think in many cases the Lord has somewhat against Christians now today. Um, and uh, the thing is, is we can make it right. You can make it, we can make it right. A, a, a man can make it, a husband can make it right. A wife can make it right. Kids can make it right. Uh, uh, individuals, families, churches can all make it, make it right. Now, I got into it last week telling you, just beginning who the Holy Spirit is. Uh, he's a person, not a personification. Uh, he's a spirit. Um, he has uh, every feeling that Jesus had, that God has. And, um, uh, and then I began to get into the, the, the Trinity of, G, uh, of the Holy Spirit. Who is he in the person of, of Christ? And um, what I want to pick up this morning is just I have a, a page and a half of, of uh, notes here and, and things that uh, I'd like to uh, uh, top everything off with. It's about the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is key. He is key. He is such, uh, 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 I guess you could almost say one of the most important, if not the most important, uh, thing among us this morning, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, God is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. We have his word when we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is among us today. You say, the Holy Spirit's here today? Yes, he absolutely is here today. Now, where is the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, Jesus said in John, he would send us another comforter. He'd dwell with us. He would dwell in us. So, so we've heard it before, and I know people have always had good intentions, but they say, when you get saved, Jesus comes into your heart. Well, yes and no. <laughs> Jesus does not come into your heart because he is at the right hand of God. The Holy Spirit of God, of Jesus, comes and lives within you. The Bible says that we are sealed until the day of redemption. Sealed how? Sealed by his Spirit. Um, now you say, Sealed like a Ziploc bag? No, sealed like a stamp. Sealed like a, uh, uh, they would, uh, back in the days, uh, the old days when they would write a letter or they would uh, send out some sort of transcript, they would fold it over, melt wax on it, and everybody, they had a signet or a seal, and they would take that seal and put it into that wax to seal that letter closed. Uh, and it was sealed until delivery. Okay, well, we are sealed. We have the 
Holy Spirit signet upon us. We are covered by the blood and we are sealed until that day. And the Holy Spirit is among us this morning. He is here right now today. Yes, you heard me right. I don't mean like a ghost. I, well, yeah, a Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, I don't mean something spooky or something crazy, but the Holy Spirit of God. He's in our midst. Uh, he's a knowing, feeling being right now, today. He's aware of your thoughts right now. You're thinking about whatever you're thinking about. I can see some of you are in daydream land right now. The Holy Spirit knows that. The Holy Spirit knows what you're thinking about. He knows about the grudge. He knows about the bitterness. He knows about, he knows what's, he knows that the roast is in the oven or in the crock pot, you know. He knows that that's what you're thinking about. He knows what I'm thinking about. The Holy Spirit knows what we're thinking about right now. He knows our thoughts. The Holy Spirit also knows the condition of your heart right now. He knows how dirty it is, how clean it is. He knows kind of what's, in, what's down in the bottom. I asked the Lord the other day, and, and I felt pretty confessed up, you know. I felt like I was confessed up. I've had my sins confessed. I felt pretty good. I said, but Lord, I said, would you stir up the drudge, the, the sediment at the bottom of my heart and let me know what's in there so we can get that out too? Now, that's not a prayer I want to pray because what it is is, is I go through the run-of-the-mill confession, you know, Things that I know that I did, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done it. And I pray and I ask confession, get right with God. And I said, Lord, what about the things that I didn't even know that I did? Or what about the things that I don't even know that are sins? Lord, stir that up at the bottom of my heart. If you go to New Palestine, Ohio right now, and you go raking through the creek, you'll find chemicals that are in the soil. Anybody paying attention to that? Seeing what's going on there? Ah, not a big deal. Uh, but uh, it is a big deal. But uh, what are they doing? It, the water is still flowing. It looks okay until you go and you scrape around in there and all those chemicals come up. I, that's what I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, would you scrape around in my heart and let me see what's in there? Or at least or don't let me see it, but at least take it out. You know, I want to keep it confessed because I want Holy Spirit power. I want Holy Spirit power. And to have Holy Spirit power, you have to have Holy Spirit presence. The Holy Spirit is not going to be powerful where he isn't. So I've got, I have to allow him, I have to get out of my own way. We as a church and, and some as churches have to get out of our own way and let the Holy Spirit have his way. He knows our heart conditions. He knows what I'm saying right now. Just as you are hearing me this morning, the Holy Spirit of God is hearing me this morning. Now, I, I hope, my hope is and my understanding is that he is speaking through me. Now, I don't mean that he has... um that Jake Jackson is trapped inside somewhere and the Holy Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit's voice, using my voice box to use my tongue and everything. I'm not being um, uh, possessed as we think possessed means. Uh, what it is, is is a yielding, saying, Holy Spirit of God, uh, my mind is set apart. The thoughts of Jake Jackson are set apart. My main goal as, as, as Jake Jackson, the pastor, is to preach the Bible and to say what the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit. And Lord, if you bring anything to my mind, if you would have the Holy Spirit speak through me, that's what I want. So many times I've walked out, I know uh, Brother Joe's experienced it, my dad's experienced it, where somebody walked out and said, man, I, it was like you were talking to me today. No, I wasn't. That was the Holy Spirit of God because whatever was going on, the Spirit communeth with itself. The Holy Spirit of God that's in me is the same Holy Spirit of God that's in you. And what you're going through that week and what I'm studying that week and going through that week, and I began to speak about whatever subject matter, and you go, whoa, that's exactly what I needed to hear this morning when this person across the aisle is going through something completely different than you are, and the Holy Spirit speaks to them too. How is that possible? Only through, or the, uh, only through Holy Spirit power. Not that I am clairvoyant, not that I know everything and, and I'm such a great orator and I know the science of speaking in such a way that I can touch and tickle the strings of the human heart. Not the case. Only the Holy Spirit of God can do that or someone who is used of the devil as a great deceiver. So uh, he knows what I'm saying he, and he also knows why you came today. The Holy Spirit of God knows why you're here. You're either here out of repetition, you're out of here to you're here to save face, you're here to and I don't and I don't I, I, there's all kinds of reasons why people, church is a good place to go, church is the right place to be. But who and I'm not this is rhetorical, don't raise your hands. But who came here this morning saying I need to hear from God? I want to hear from God. I need God to speak to me today. I need God to 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 make himself known. 
I need God to, oh God, I'm hungry for their word. Who came to church today saying, I've got to hear from heaven. I need to know what to do. I need to know how to navigate this area of my life. I don't know what to do. And I know that the Bible is going to be preached today. So I'm going there. I'm going there. Who came to church today? The devil knows why you came. Now, uh, he, he also, by the way, knows what you're going to say when you leave here. He knows where you're going, Applebee's or Chili's, you know. He knows where you're going. He knows what you're going to say. He knows what you're going to do when you leave here today. And the wonderful thing is, is that this is the great thing that we'll find about the Holy Spirit. We will find that the great thing about the Holy Spirit is, is we'll find him exactly like Jesus. We'll find the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. He's not different. God doesn't have one personality and Jesus have another and the Holy Spirit have another. We would never be able to figure it out. We would never be able to, to get along in life if we had to please God, but also who had one personality and be thankful to Jesus who had another personality. Well, what pleases God and displeases God? What pleases Jesus and displeases Jesus? What pleases the Holy Spirit and displeases the Holy Spirit? We would never accomplish anything. We might as well just abandon it and go live for self. But no, these three are one and they are the same. We'll find the Holy Spirit just like Jesus. Jesus, just as Jesus is like the Father, the Spirit is like Jesus. And the Spirit feels about things just as Jesus felt about them. What angered God, angered, uh, what angered, angers the Spirit, angers Jesus, angers God. What pleases the Spirit, pleases Jesus, pleases God. You see, you'll find that just like Jesus felt about things, the Holy Spirit feels about things in everything Jesus did. The way that Jesus loved, well, the Holy Spirit loves. The way that Jesus has had compassion, the Holy Spirit has compassion. Just like Jesus was a comforter, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Just as Jesus was and is the truth, the Holy Spirit is the truth. But I want us to keep in mind this morning, just because he is loving and compassionate and caring and kind, he can be grieved. He's not, um, he's not um, immune from having hurt feelings. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God has feelings just like you do. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. How can we grieve the Holy Spirit? Ah, you, you can doubt him. You can doubt the Holy Spirit. You can resist the Holy Spirit. There may be somebody in this room this morning, the Holy Spirit's trying to talk to you and you're resisting them. Brother Alex and I went out soul winning yesterday. The last person we spoke to, I felt like was a resistor, a resistor of the Holy Spirit. You see, they didn't see us. I mean, come on, how could you look at us and resist us? You know what I mean? Uh, you, know, you know, they resist the Holy Spirit. They resist the Holy Spirit. They resist the Holy Spirit. How can we grieve the Holy Spirit? By doubting him, by resisting him. You see, well, only lost people can resist the Holy Spirit. No, saved people can't. Saved people can also. When the Holy Spirit says give and you keep. When the Holy Spirit says go and you stay. When the Holy Spirit says tell and you keep quiet. When you resist the Holy Spirit, because you resist him long enough, that resistance turns into something that really grieves him and usually quenches him as a constant disobedience. A constant disobedience towards the calling, towards the pulling on this heart, this, the heart of the Holy Spirit, pulling on your heart from him. When we disobey and disobey and disobey and disobey, he'll say, okay, I'm, you've quenched me. And the Bible says, quench not the Spirit. That's a command. Don't quench him. Now, it doesn't say don't grieve him, even though we're not supposed to grieve him. Oh, yeah, it says grieve not the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, but it says not to quench him. Not to quench him. How do we not quench him? By not grieving him. How do we grieve him? By doubting him. By doubting him. I went out soul in yesterday, and I had to keep in mind the Holy Spirit's doing the work. 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 Because so many times I've went out on my own power and... Didn't see a lot done. I've went out on my own power and my own zeal and went, okay, I have enough knowledge to lead somebody to the Christ. Everybody in this room has enough knowledge to lead somebody to Christ, but do we have enough power? You see, you see because we're doing spiritual warfare. We're not going out and having a conversation with people. We're going out to war. I, I'm nervous every time I go soul winning. 
You say you're nervous every time you go soul winning? Yes. The same butterflies I had in my stomach when we would go to um, uh, some of these basketball tournaments when I was a kid, you know, and we're getting out there and we come running out of the hall, you know, and going to the court and doing our layup drills. And man, we're getting, what are we getting ready for? Competition. It's competition. And there's a crowd. There are people watching. Last thing I want to do is shoot an air ball. (laughs) Last thing I want to do is throw the ball away or, you know, fumble away the game. I had these butterflies in my stomach. I was nervous because there was competition. There was battle going to happen. I'm going soul winning. Guess what's happening? Battle. Spiritual battle. Man, it's it's difficult, but I go out with Holy Spirit power. It can be done no other way. But if I am constantly doubting him and constantly resisting him and constantly rejecting him and constantly ignoring him and constantly sinning against him and refusing to obey him, he's grieved over and over and over again and can be quenched. But I want you to also get this next step. Uh, Though we grieve the Holy Spirit and can quench him, there's a reason why he's grieved. Do you know why there's a reason he's grieved? He's grieved because he loves You can't grieve somebody for you who doesn't love you. Here's an example. Let's say, um, let's pick out a bad person. Joe Goble and, and, oh, he raised his hand. Oh, were you pointing at Inga? Uh, (laughs) Let's say, let's say Lucas, my son here, Lucas. Um, He's a pretty good kid uh, uh, in all uh, things considered. He's a pretty good kid. And uh, let's say he gets involved with, um, just some, some kid. We moved to a neighborhood somewhere, you know, and he gets involved with the neighborhood kids and he's hanging out with the neighborhood kids and uh, he begins to, to do things that he ought not do. And one day I get a call and, um, and I don't, it doesn't really work this way anymore, I, I don't think. But I get a call from uh, the authorities say, hey, your son's down. He's a minor. They got to call the parents, you know, the guardian. And they get a hold of me and I walk into the police station and see my son sitting on a bench next to his neighborhood friend with handcuffs on, you know, I'm going to feel bad for the neighborhood kid. Man, it's, it's too bad he doesn't, you know, it's, it's too bad he's in this situation. I feel sorry for you. But you know what I'm going to be grieved about? What's really going to get me is seeing my kid in handcuffs. That's, that's going to grieve me. Why is it going to grieve me? Because I love him. I feel bad for that kid. But I feel real bad for my son. And I don't mean uh, necessarily, oh, I feel bad for him. But it grieves me because he knows better. It grieves me because I see the potential that is in him. And it's being thrown away. Because I see what he's capable of. And I see the environment that he's, put in, that he's been put in. And, and I see the, the potential that he has. And he's, getting, he's throwing it away by hanging out with a neighborhood kid. So therefore, yes, I am grieved. I am grieved. But then he begins to live a lifestyle completely of uh, disobedience and rejection and ignoring. And, and basically, not only, not, not only just disobedience, but to where he becomes rebellious and angry or um, uh, mom's fault, dad's fault, uh, and we live a, a lifestyle of separation from the parents, uh, what's healthy for the parent, what is healthy for the parent, and a parent could never do this because a parent's love for a kid is always there, but a parent is like, all right, I'm going to have to cut you off. You get that? The Christmas cards, we're not sending Christmas cards. We will st- we'll, we'll come to your funeral. We'll love you. We love you, son. But our love for you is not, you're not, re- you're not receiving it. It's not compatible. It's, or, or daughter for that matter, because sons aren't the only ones that, you know, lose their minds. But, um, uh, uh, or grandchild or whatever the case may be. But you say, listen, we are going down this road and you are going down that road and we're going opposite directions in life. I love you. And I have all this advice and knowledge and and guidance for you, and you'll have none of it? Okay, well, my efforts are being wasted. My love is being wasted. Um, uh, So God bless you, but y'all, you you go right on down the road. And see, just as a parent would grieve for their son or their daughter, I grieve for you because there is no grief where there is no love. The Holy Spirit loves us, and the Holy Spirit says, okay, if, if, you, if you're going to grieve me to the point of quenching, no more Christmas cards for you. I cannot, I, I, I'm not speaking to you anymore. I, it's wasted on your foolishness. So I'm just going to sit over here. I'm just going to, I'm going to go give my power to somebody else. 
And then when you've been through the ringer, when the chastisement of God has buckled you to your knees and broken your back and stooped your shoulders and wrinkled your face to the point where sin will always beat you up and you're ready to repent, my, my doors are always open. See, the, the story of the prodigal son's not in there by accident. It's not only um, uh, the father with mankind and the, the savior with the sinner, but it's also the Holy Spirit with the prodigal. See, the Holy Spirit is grieved at our sin because he loves us. And it's proof that he loves us. Now, the Bible says, He that he hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So, Three Rivers Baptist Church, what's the Spirit saying to us today? Family, what's the church family? What's the Spirit saying to you today? The um, revival or the restoration of the Holy Spirit to his rightful place in this church, in your life, in your family, is the most important thing that can take place. You see, the Holy Spirit, there is no revival where there is no Holy Spirit. It's, there's a show. You know, Miss Sarah told me about it yesterday because I said, I'm not, look, I don't, I'm, I don't, what's happening down there is happening down there. Like, I, I'm in my own world. I am, I'm in my own world. It's, and you say, oh, well, you're so, you know, I, look, I don't care. Nobody in here would say it, but small-minded. No, Three Years Baptist, three years Baptist Church is in a, in a city, in a county of over 300,000 people. That's a big enough world for me. Um, I'm not concerned about um, Asbury, Kentucky or Lexington, Kentucky. I'll let Jeff Fugate figure that out. I'm not worried about uh, the Hammond area. I'll let uh, Brother Wilkerson figure that out. I'm not worried about Columbus. I'll let Brother um, uh, George Bell figure that out. I'm not worried about Fort Worth, Texas. I'll let Brother Robin Smith figure that out. God called those men to those places. I'll let them all figure that out. That's their place. This is my place. This is mine. Uh, let's lead Fort Wayne to Christ one soul at a time or 10 at a time, amen. Uh, but um, uh, the, the, nothing can happen. There is no life, there is no power, there is no success, there is no turning over a new leaf without the Holy Spirit power in our life. Just as Jesus showed miracles to the people in his day, the Holy Spirit shows those same miracles today. Same ones. Uh, there's a book back there. Um, I, I uh, started leafing through it called, uh, it's by Dr. John R. Rice, Prayer, um, Asking and Receiving. And just in the, um, the foreword of that book there, just... Prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer, real guys. I had to close it and just laugh going, man, that's insane. Uh, uh, the church that I went to um, on, on Wednesday told me, uh, man, they built their new building and everything, but they, should we get a steeple? Should we not? You know, what do we do about a steeple? And they pray, you know, we can't, no, the pastor said, no, I'm, I, I, I just, I feel rotten spending that much money on a steeple. We can't do that. You know how many missionaries we can support and what kind of, we can, what kind of money we can do with that? You know, for a steeple, we're not buying a steeple. We'll just do something else. And uh, a church member called and said, pastor, there is a steeple laying on the side of the road on 465. He said, what? There's a, it's just laying out here. So they called the uh, highway patrol. They called, they tried researching whose steeple is this. Nobody laid claim to it. So the lady pulled over on the side of the road and parked in front of it, you know, and said, it's ours now. <laughs> and called a bunch of guys from the church and they showed up with their trailers and everything and got it put up there. Beautiful steeple. And I just, and he was telling me all about these things. And I said, brother, I can't help it. I said, I'm stuck on the steeple. And we started laughing about them. I'm like, a steeple just laying on the side of the road? Yes, folks, the Holy Spirit of God knows the needs that we have. But if we're living outside, if we're resisting him and rejecting him and defying him and disobeying him and sinning against him, why in the world is he going to do steeple on the side of the road prayer requests for us? I said, as I said last week, we can't be part-time Christians and have a full-time Holy Spirit. Now, please understand, the Holy Spirit knows that we fall. He knows we're going to fall. He knows when you leave here, there's something that's going to trip you up. But with the Holy Spirit of God, we trip a lot less. And eventually we stop tripping. And then you get down the road a little further in your Christian life and find that there's another stumbling block. But with the Holy Spirit of God and obedience into his book and to his word, we get that out of the way. The Christian life is, is um, one that is constantly and continually overcoming obstacles. The devil does not resist armies who do not resist him. The devil doesn't fight against churches who are not warring against the gates of hell. 
The devil doesn't care about a church who comes together and sings songs and has a little, has a little um, uh, ditty of a song and gives a little sermonette with a little fellowship et, with a little tithe et, with a little offering et, and has no power of God. The Holy Spirit, or the, the, the devil and the demons of hell, they don't care about that in, in any way, shape, or form. If the, 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 I'm tripping over my words here. The Holy Spirit of God is, is a beam, is a beacon And when the Holy Spirit of God is placed on a people and placed on a church and placed on a family and placed on homes, oh, then the devil's attention is drawn. You're like, well, wait a second. We don't want to draw the devil's attention. Sure we do. You say, no, Brother Jake, don't say that. Yeah, we have. We did it in the past. We did it in the past. And see, I think the devil thinks he had us. I think he thinks he had us. Now, I, I get, I, I don't know, there's just something boiling inside of me, something there's a, uh, something crawling up my spine. Well, I just, ugh. it's a fight, baby. It's war. It's competition. It's a challenge. And we may get bloodied and battered and look like this by the end of it. But man, I think when we see Jesus face to face, I want to be battle scarred. I want some blood on my sword. I want my shield to have some arrows stuck in it. I want to have some dirt on my face. I want to say, hey, hey, we fought for the Lord because when it's all said and done, he's given us new bodies and new names and new reputations and new testimonies anyway. But they that be wise, the Bible says, will shine as the stars, will shine as the firmament. And I don't want to walk around looking like a dull star. I don't want to be dull. I want my light to shine bright in heaven. I want to be a who's who and a somebody. You say, well, you're not supposed to earn rewards for that. I'm not. But I'm saying he's worthy. And he says, if you live a life that, that praises me, that lifts me up, that keeps me up, that, li- that, that John the Baptist said, I must decrease, he must increase. If we would all adopt that, I must increase or I must decrease, he must increase. And I live a lifestyle. We live a lifestyle. Our church becomes that then we will shine as the stars. Shine as the, you know, you look up in the sky and see stars, you're seeing light that is still reaching earth. That star's been dead for years. And that light is still going on. How bright is this light of a star? Now, nobody will shine like the sun, amen. Can't even look at that. But we will shine as the stars. And uh, uh, if, 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 what's the point? Let's close the doors. Let's sell the building if we're not gonna have the Holy Spirit. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You know what I said yesterday about that Asbury revival? I said, why don't some independent fundamental Baptist preacher kind of wiggle his way down in there, schmooze his way up onto the platform and preach the gospel? Every Baptist preacher I see that's online talking about it, they all want to talk about it. Why don't you go down there and do some talking? If you're so interested, if you're so concerned, and I'm talking some bigwig pastors. I'm talking some guys who run thousands. If you're so concerned about it, go down there and schmooze your way on there. Don't wear a tie. Put on a, you know, look like one, look like one of them, amen. It's wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Put your hands in the air when they sing and then get yourself on the platform and preach hellfire damnation and either, either make a real revival or break it up. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. We have to have him. The restoration of the Holy Spirit to his rightful place. Where is the rightful place of the Holy Spirit? On the throne of your heart. In your life, it's the most important thing that can take place. Now, we can have it all. We can have it all. You say, what is have it all? Um, A massive, I don't ever want to call it a platform. It's an altar. Uh, A stage, a platform, an altar. Big one where we have a band, two grand pianos. Uh, We have all the technology. We have all the conveniences. We have... um, uh, men's bathrooms that have urinals in them. <laughs> you know, the really nice stuff. Uh, we, have <laughs> we have a beautiful foyer sh- and great chandeliers. All the cr- I mean, we, and we're just, It's laid out, it's decked out. All the modern conveniences. A really nice church building. We can have it all. But if we don't have the spirit, we have nothing at all. We have zero. We have nothing at all. Because the scripture says, for it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit. It's not by buildings. It's not by brand new buses. It's not by crystal chandeliers. It's not by LED light bulbs. 
It's not by a pastor who has a doctorate. It's not by, it's, it's not, it's not by your, your, uh, your knowledge. The Bible says that knowledge profit up. Uh, and by the way, uh, knowledge is my people, so my people um, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So there's a balance in knowledge there. But, but uh, we're talking about that in Sunday school class. But it is not by might. It's not by power. It's not by intellect. It's not by riches, but by my spirit. Folks, nothing but God. Nothing but God. How do we get the spirit back? How do we get the Holy Spirit of God back in our life? Number one, and not in any particular order, by prayer. You got to want it. You got to want it. The Holy Spirit is not going to go where he isn't wanted. The Holy Spirit isn't going to dwell when he, where he's unwelcome. You've got to want it. You got to want it. The Bible says that he that hunger, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. If you hunger after it, if you thirst after it, David said, man, I thirst as a deer or of the heart panteth after the water brook. So doth my heart. So doth I panteth after thee, O Lord. Lord, I pant after you, O God. I need you. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro about the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. You got to want it. Well, how do you begin to show that you want it? Prayer. Prayer. Prayer is asking. Prayer is asking. Prayer. If, the, if our church would get back to prayer, prayer. If you would get back to prayer, prayer. I said last week the stat in churches were, was um, uh, 80% of pastors spent less, and this was across the board uh, of all the denominations, 80% of ministers uh, spent less than 15 minutes uh, a day in prayer. Less than 15 minutes a day. Well, folks, just to go through these pews and look, at, and look at you in my mind and pray for you, just praying for the people of the church would take an hour. Just to look at, look at you individually. Now, some of you, your families are too big. Stop having kids. Um, uh, I can't pray for all you. Uh, but uh, just to pray for the people of the church would take forever. No, it take, would take a really long time. And then to pray for my needs and pray for the country and the, the wants and the needs and, oh, God, I need power. And, man, I would spend forever in prayer, and so would you, just in prayer. Prayer. What is prayer? Getting alone with God. Find somewhere alone that is quiet and get alone with God. Get alone with him. Number one, prayer. Number two, obedience. Obedience. You cannot, you cannot get along with God. Can two walk together lest they be agreed? Hey, Luke, do you see this room? It's pretty, pretty dirty, right? Yes, sir. Should be cleaned up, shouldn't it? Yes, sir. Well, I want you to clean it up. But, Dad, that's your stuff. Clean it up anyway. Ah, uh, No, I... <laughs> clean it up. Clean it up. Can two walk together lest they be agreed? Is, hey, this is, this, this is something that needs fixed, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, well, how do we get it fixed? Here's the formula, my child, God says, the Bible says. Here's the, situ- here's the way to get it fixed. Obey the Bible. Obey the Bible. Obedience is the key, the key that starts to open up the windows of heaven from God. A church that loves one another, a church where the, uh, uh, the people with income tithe, the people where people tell people about Jesus, the people where we uh, uh, fellowship with one another and help one another and care for one another and do for others. Uh, I pulled up downtown yesterday before I talked to uh, Dave Simon, so I led to the Lord. Uh, before I talked to him, I was at the Marathon gas station putting some gas in the truck, and uh, there was a car next to me. The hood was up, broken down. And um, I said, uh, oh, I don't want to talk to him. You know, this isn't the right situation. It's not the... But I felt like the Holy Spirit said, go talk to him. Uh, uh, two twin sisters moved from Wisconsin. Her husband's, one of the husbands of the, one of the twins, uh, uh, um, uh, was in the Air Force, and um, so we got to talking, and one of the car was broken down, and, and I kind of helped him with, with what I could, you know, and uh, not, not really too much. We're like, yep, there's an engine in there, uh, but I, 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 I'm a little bit more mechanically inclined than that, but I did a couple of tests and helped him out with what I could and kind of gave him some suggestions, and we began to talk, and uh, both born-again Christians, uh, well, what was, so, so they're already saved, Holy Spirit. What was the point of going over there? Because he told you to. Learn to obey. We, I, I've said it's a spiritual impulse. Once you grow up a little bit enough to, uh, in your Christian life, you know it's not a spiritual impulse. You know it's the Holy Spirit. 
Learn to obey when the Holy Spirit is talking to you. I remember one time, it was years ago, Dan Keyes was over here, and he was, they were going through a hard time, health and kids and different things like that. I had 40 bucks in my pocket, gave it to my dad and said, Dad, give that to Brother Dan. Give it to Brother Dan. I would never give 40 bucks to Dan Hoffman, but Dan Keyes, absolutely. <laughs> Wake up, Brother Dan. Uh, Sarah's like, laugh, crab, laugh. Uh, 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 no, of, co- of course, but the Holy, I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to do it. Immediately I did it. No, I like $40. Anybody in here like 40 bucks? I like 40 bucks. Uh, I like 50 bucks and 60 and 80 and 120 and 200. I, I, I like money just like anybody else does. But I felt like the Lord told me to give it to him, so I gave it to him. I told you that story where my pastor, or, or my pastor, where my dad was sitting in church, and you've heard that story before from, from uh, um, he's told it to you himself, where he's sitting in college and he had 10 bucks, and he's like, hey, man, this is for gas, for a newspaper, and for breakfast, and I can't wait to do that. And he said, he felt like the Holy Spirit was like, give that guy behind you 10 bucks. Like, no, no, I don't want to give that guy 10 bucks. Lord, you know this is for gas, for a newspaper, and for breakfast. I work hard. I, I don't do a lot for myself anyway. I'm all, I do everything I do is for others. I don't treat myself as it is, and all I want is a newspaper and a little bit of breakfast. And the Holy Spirit's like, give him that 10 bucks. So after an internal battle, he said, all right, all right, Holy Spirit, I'll give him the 10 bucks. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, I don't want you to. Well, make up your mind. Holy Spirit. No, what was he doing? He was saying, I just wanted to see if you'd obey or not. I just wanted to see if you were obedient or not. You see, folks, obedience. Oh, you know what keeps Lucas and I on good terms? He's my son. I love him. But obedience, honoring his mother, treating his mother right, that's what keeps he and I on good terms is obedience. Number three was confession. Prayer, obedience, confession. Keeping yourself confessed. Folks, don't try to hide your sin. Just just take it to the Lord and go, Lord, here I am, a sinner. I'm dirty. Lord, I fell in the pen again. Lord, I fell into the sin again. Lord, I fell into some, I fell into foolishness again. I did that which I know I shouldn't have done. I said what I shouldn't have said. Lord, would you forgive me? Guess what he'll do? First John 1 9. He is faithful and just to forgive it. He'll forgive it. And then number four is clean living. Clean living. Keep yourself unspotted from the world. How do you not fall into the pig pen? Well, don't go around it. Stay off the farm. You don't want to fall into the pig pen. You don't want to step in a mud pie, a cow pie, amen. You don't want to step in that. Stay off the farm. Stay off it. There's a message preached called slip, slide, fall. Don't want to fall? Don't slip. How do you not slip? Don't get around slippery places. It really isn't that difficult. But man, how is it? If it's not that difficult, why is it difficult? Because the devil has been at it for years and thousands of years, deceiving us and making it look like something it's not. And by the way, well, no, that's, I'll leave that alone. But the devil is a great deceiver and he's a great liar. So when we pray and when we obey and when we confess and we live pure, live pure, the Holy Spirit takes over again. We let him have his way with us. And when the Holy Spirit takes over, there is light and there is life and there is victory and there is joy. There's some folks this morning who need to hear this message, who aren't gonna hear this message, and they don't have joy and they don't have victory and they have no life and there is no light and it's a a dark cloud hangs over their head. It's always raining, it's always gray. It's And I don't mean they're walking around like Eeyore, but they're walking around going, how do, when will the sunshine break through when you let the Holy Spirit of God have his way? Folks, when the Holy Spirit has his way, it will come to us, and we can all together, this, this is how I put it, live on another level. Live on another level. So I believe that. I believe that the Holy Spirit can take us to new heights that we've never experienced before. And some of you um, uh, get to experience things that you've only heard of. I hope that you believe that too. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So one of two things is going to happen from the last two weeks. One of two things. Number one, you're either going to take the truth of the Holy Spirit and put it on a shelf. And just go, okay, now I have some knowledge about the Holy Spirit and just put it on the shelf there. Or number two, you're going to earnestly 
and eagerly, and I don't mean you get all giddy about it, but I mean in your heart, you're going to eagerly start seeking him and start expecting better things. Because if you'll pray and you'll obey and you'll confess and you'll live clean, and if you, if you do get dirty, you wash it off real quick. You say, how do I wash it? Confession. Everybody thinks prayer time happens in the morning before you start your day. No, prayer throughout the day. It's in scripture, pray without ceasing. You can pray everywhere, anywhere. Dear God, I shouldn't have said that. Please forgive me. Oh, I've done that immediately. You in traffic, driving a truck. Rah! Oh, dear God, I'm a dummy. That just monster came out. Rah! Oh, no. And I don't mean I cussed. I said something like, you know, Ford or Packers or something. Uh, but uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't swear, you know. Um, uh, Brother Drew told me, he said, um, there were some guys at work that said they heard you swearing. <laughs> I said, no, they didn't. Well, what is that? That's my, don't be messing with my testimony. And he said, and he said no, I, I, told, I told him, you don't even, you try not even say stinking from the pulpit. He said, that guy doesn't cuss. He doesn't. And he told me, he's like, you don't say blank or blank or blank. And I'm like, oh, all right. No, I'm, he didn't. <laughs> Brother, brother Drew didn't do that. He, he didn't do that. He's just like, I told the guys, that guy doesn't, he does not cuss. And, and, I, and I don't, only at home at Jamie. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think, see, see, I have such a good testimony. Even Brother Kevin doesn't believe that I would do that. Uh, but, uh, and I don't. But one of two things is going to happen. We're going to go, oh, Holy Spirit power. and power. All right, well, I don't want that yet. So what I'll do is I'll just put it on the shelf. And, you know, when, one day when I need it, one day when I think I need the Holy Spirit, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, pull that off the shelf and use it. Why wait? Why wait? Start eagerly seeking it today. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? Man, let the Holy Spirit of God have power and presence, his presence and power in you. The Holy Spirit... You know, he only wants good things for you, to do good things through you for the glory of God. You see, there's nobody on earth that deserves glory. There's only one that deserves glory and honor and praise and majesty. And that's God Almighty, our Father, who is in heaven. Well, the way that we do that is by letting the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. How do we do that? Through his word. See, I said earlier, the Holy Spirit knows why you came to church today. Did you come seeking a blessing? Did you come seeking guidance, light, something? I'm telling you right now, you can't find it if you don't have the Holy Spirit power in your life. Let him have his way. Dear Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd bless this invitation as Miss Jennifer begins to play. I hope whoever comes forward or whoever does business there in their seat that Lord, you'd help us, help our hearts, help us to get right. Stop waiting and fooling around, but to get right, to do right. Return that joy of our salvation and smile and a, 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 an upbeat spirit in our lives again. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Heavenly Father, help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me while Miss Jennifer begins to play? Why don't you come do business with the Lord?
I see a lot of people come and pray that they're begging God to do something. You know, a lot of times we pray and we say, Lord, don't, you don't even ask for certain things. You say, Lord, I need help or do something. That's what I pray in my life. A lot of times now I say, Lord, please, am I, do you have something for me? I'm not a pastor anymore. What do you want me to do, Lord? I'm feeling better and boy, I'm seeking God. What's he want? What's he want from you today? What do you need from him today? Just tell him. Just talk to him like a friend. look up here real quick. Thank you, Ms. Jennifer. Thank you uh, uh, for your attention during the preaching. I I needed that message. I'm glad he went through his points quickly, aren't you? And the reason I say that is because then you can remember them. If you take a long time on a point sometimes. So first off for Holy Spirit was a prayer. You got to want it. Second was obedience. No, that was the last one. Was the second one obedience? O B I D I B. you know, however that song goes. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Obedience, man, that's hard. Sometimes I'm doing something, the Holy Spirit says, why don't you do this? I'm like, because I don't want to. <laughs> now, you talk that way to him, too. He doesn't get mad, but it's kind of like, the hardest thing to do is make your mind, your spirit tell your mind what to do, your mind tell your body what to do. Stinking bodies we got, boy, they want to do their own thing. So number one was prayer, number two is obedience, number three, confession, confession. number four, Clean living. All right, that's that's not hard to do. I think all of us here, every single one of us, on varying varying uh, different degrees and planes, we're all obeying. We're all trying to live right. We're all reading the Bible. We're all praying throughout the day, off and on throughout the day. Uh, we're all trying to live clean. What was the other one? Confession. And we're trying to stay confessed up. So you keep doing those things. I guarantee you that message today will bless you and help you. Brother Jake went out with some of those young men to talk to him about the Lord, lead him to the Lord. Won't that be awesome? And so I guess I'll have Brother Kevin come right now, and he'll sing, and I'll go shake hands with y'all. And sorry, Brother Jake's not here to shake hands, but uh, make sure you tell Brother Miller. Don't tell Brother If you don't even go up and pat him on the back, well, it's not my way. It's not how I am. Well, try being that way for a minute. Even if you're instinctive sincere. Oh, can't say that. I never promised not to say it. Even if you're insincere, tell a dude, man. How old are you, Joe? You're my age, right? Six, the 62, 63. Imagine having been married 41 years. 43 years. Two awesome kids. And your wife's sick and gets sick and dies. Now, he, he's a healthy dude, man. Played softball till he was like, he was a slugger for years. So the next 20 years, he has no wife. I don't know if he wants to get remarried or not. I would say no. One wife's enough for any man whole life entire life uh but i don't know but i know this he's a good dude and his wife's in heaven so is his son you might want to clap hands with him tell him you love him all right bro kevin you come and i'll go back Jennifer, thank you. let's sing we'll never say goodbye